Welcome to the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips and it's time to have some fun carving. We have the flying horse weather vane, we'll make this. We have the base, this is a wind spirit out of very durable woods and look at this. From Jim Foster's creative mind, the three-dimensional scroll saw art. The moose in the woods. This is a keeper. Stay with us today on the American Wood Shop. Learn how to make your very own carvings. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by Woodcraft. Since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. Today, we're going to do three carvings together. We're going to do the wind spirit in a piece of northern white cedar, very durable wood. We're going to do the flying horse weather vane, okay, out of walnut because that's durable. More on that later. And later, Susie will show you how to cut this out and carve it into a beautiful three-dimensional carving. Uh, and Jim Foster, who designed this, will come in to show us how to paint it. A lot of fun. Now, let's take this workpiece out, and you can see this is drawn out, so I've got my road map here, and we're going to use four tools to profile this to save a ton of time carving it. Off to the outside. When you do carving, layout's really important. So these dividers are equally spaced to the bottom of the nose and to the eyes for this face. You get the eyes and the nose right, everything else comes together. I sketch this out with a permanent marker like that, and that gives me areas that I can sculpt to. Now, whatever you do, when you're using any tools in your wood shop, be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety instructions that come with those tools. In this case, we'll be using an angle grinder, so side shields on the safety glasses required, hearing protections in, and uh, let's take a look at this right now. The face goes upside down like that. Got a good bottom here on that northern white cedar. So that's the front. And now what I'll do, I want a gnarly edge forward for this. I line it up to my layout marks. That looks really good right there. And now I can drive this with construction fasteners and driver. This way I can join the base, the cypress, to the northern white cedar and it will make it nice and solid. So I'll just drive all of those long construction fasteners and then that way I can secure this whole assembly to a quick bench. And this will give me a perfect way to hold that as I sculpt this into form. And the one thing I'll do right now is put the mouth in this is a wind spirit. So an inch and a half Forstner bit. Whoop! You got to get that point started. Nice and steady. Okay, we'll get it started straight in. And then I can angle it downward. I want this to be about an inch and a half deep. I'll lay out the mouth. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And from there what I'll do is clamp this down securely, and once I get that done, I'll show you the quickest way to form this. Time to rough it in. Dust mask is on. This is a right angle grinder, four and a half inch. This is a tungsten carbide cutter with holes in it, and this is secured now, clamped in place, and watch what you can do with this. Now if you look closely, you can see right through that cutter. And that way, you can follow your layout line. When you use a grinder like this, you want to keep both hands on this when you're sculpting. That way, you have control and it's safe. So I'm going to sculpt this on around like that, create the eye socket using the grinder, and then I'll go to a different tool, which is a 
brass bristle brush, make sure you have side shields on with your safety glasses. And I can really start to bring out the detail with that. And from there, it's on to a flap sander, 60 grit. And that's on a good cordless drill. And I smooth out the profile. And then I can go over the entire surface with a six inch 60 grit random orbital sander. And that will save a ton of time carving. The details are at the workbench, so let's head inside. Now, are you ready, Susie? I'm ready. Let's get going. Okay, this is 3D scroll saw art created by Jim Foster. And Susie's going to copy this now. And what's your roadmap? What's the game plan? Well, I just traced out from Jim's book that has the templates. Trace out your moose and trace out the trees. You're going to cut those out on the bandsaw and then do the fine cuts on the scroll saw. And then the fun part begins. I get to carve. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see that this has been beautifully painted. And Jim will be with us at the end of the show to show us how to do that. That's an art of its own. But for right now, Susie, you get started on the trees in the middle. Okay. And I'll cut out the moose at the bandsaw first and then over to the scroll saw. So, all right, let's all get right. going. To cut out the patterns for the 3D scroll saw art, from the book of Jim's, just increase the pattern size by 164%. Make your master template from that by using spray adhesive, and you're in business. Or you can trace out the profile once you make one, which I've done. Now the boards have to net out 5 eighths of an inch in thickness, and you need three of those. And to that end, I've opted to bandsaw this down, so here's how it goes. Make sure that you use a good resaw fence and a half inch or tooth blade and push blocks to cut those wide boards down. That way the grain will all match. And once those are cut out, it's over to the scroll saw. Once I have the work pieces cut to that 5 8 inch thickness, you can see the trees in the middle are cut out. And I use the same technique for the moose on the front and the number seven blade is pierced through a pilot hole, and I ease this right on down onto that blade, tighten the chuck onto the blade, tension it, and add more tension back here, and I have this turned all the way up speed-wise. Turn it on. This is on dust collection through a HEPA filter, so there's no fine dust, and now what I'll do with that number seven blade that has 10.5 teeth per inch, and just follow the layout line of the moose. And the main thing with these scrolling blades is just keep the blade cutting when you make those turns. If you try to turn without cutting, well, down that road lies ruin, you won't be able to follow your pattern line. And so remember, this is going to be scrolled out and then carved by Susie. So I'll just work through all these cuts, remove this area, turn it off, lift that out, pierce the blade through the other area, cut that out, and once I have this cut out, I sketch out the legs, and then it's back to Susie. Honing to a razor's edge. Ooh, it is nice and sharp. It's going to make my carving a whole lot easier. Sharp edges are key. Absolutely. Okay, now what do you think of the Oh, it looks workout? good. And you got it all drawn in for me. Should make the carving much easier. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. <laughs> now, this is what Susie made. Now, how long did this take you? Oh, about on and off. About two weeks, probably. Yeah. And look at the three pieces. There's the backboard, solid wood, the trees. And then this comes up. That's the middle piece. And those are rounded, and you'll see more on that in a second. And then the moose that Jim helped with is now coming out of the woods. The head's forward, the rump is back into the woods, and that's key, and that's what she's going to show you, the right. tips on that. And this is the finished version of Jim. So onward, Susie. Awesome. I'm okay. off to do my carving. Okay, thanks. Before we get started, I'll show you some of my favorite tools that I'm going to use the most. To work away the trees, I'm going to use these two knives. I've got a smaller detail knife that's going to be good for the small branches and the tight spaces. And then this bigger knife's really going to shave off those pieces of wood. So let me show you those in action. So I'll hold this here and just work that wood away here. And you let the grain tell you. 
you'll work it and you can you can feel it if it's going to tear out a little bit just keep taking off that wood see just take that off there and then i'll flip it over on the back side and i can pull some off there and just keep doing it just dig in and make sure you already have that kevlar glove and just keep working away the wood there and shape off a little bit on the sides and that's really going to sculpt that over and then for the smaller knife i can get in and work on these branches and just shave it off and it's little but it's mighty and it really just takes that wood off and it's good for scraping and and getting that going and then i'll flip it over and get it on the back side and you can see it's really coming off if it's good and sharp it's coming off like butter as they say so then my other tools, I have a V cutting tool and you can see it's a nice little V there and make sure they're good and sharp and that's going to detail the tree trunk for me. So I'll go in here and start at the top and just do a deep V and you can see that coming off there and just pull it all the way down and just stagger it because I'm just making that look like true tree bark. And it's really going to come alive. And then when I get down here at the bottom, I'm just going to carry it all the way down. And that's going to create the rest of the tree trunk and the root system. So I'm going to come down here, and that's going to curve around. And I can do it this direction, because I'm left-handed. It may be a little bit harder to see. And just scoop it up and just head that way. And I'll come back and forth a lot, because this will need a lot of texturing. Okay, so that's how you do the trees. That's all my quick tips on the trees. Now it's time to get to the moose. Now with the moose, this is going to be concave here. So I'm going to scoop a little bit of this out and this is going to be convex to make it really come out. So I'll get my little scoop gouge. And this one's just barely scooped. You can just see a little bit. And I'm going to use that third backing board underneath to give me room to brace it and I'll just scoop this out a little bit and just take little scoops out because I don't want to take a ton away and you don't want to break the antlers because they're way too cool for that so just scoop that out and you can see how I'm doing that and just take little scoops and that starts making it concave in okay so see there it's just going a little bit and I'll keep scooping that out and that gives you an idea on how to do that one and this one's convex so what I want to do is kind of round over the edges because I want that part of the his horns to really come out and I might want to brace that a little bit because that is kind of delicate and I don't want to break it off so I'm just going to shave off the edges of those of his antlers there just a little bit at a time and you just kind of round over the edges like that and that'll just round it over and I'll scoop off a little bit on the back side of that one too but you can kind of get the idea there just scoop that out and then for his body I want his head to also be coming out this way because I want him to look like he's walking out of those woods and so I'll just shave off the edges of that just to kind of round him over just a little bit at a time and watch the grain when you're working because just shave off a little bit at a time right there and then for the back of him I want that to kind of go back in and so what I'm going to do is hold it here and just shave a little bit off and kind of round off his rump as Scott said kind of making that go back and just scoop out a little bit all the way around and doing that and just keep taking those edges off and that's going to really round it over and you can kind of start to see that a little bit and just take little bitty cuts and I'll just keep detailing that away and really make that go around so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with that and then as far as his legs here I'll use the V tool and I kind of want to use that to mark the legs because then I'm going to dig out the, the material in the middle and do that but I'll use this V tool to give me my lines and then I'll just dig this out with the scoop gouge and that's this big scooper and I can just dig some of that out and that's really going to give him the effect 
of walking out of those woods. And it'll make his legs more pronounced. And just keep scooping away and working it away. And that's how you get the moose going. And then I'll keep, got several more hours of that and Jim will come help me paint it. But let's go see what Scott's doing. I absolutely love wind spirits from whimsical wood. Found wood that would rot otherwise. And there's one challenge and that is it has a tendency to tear out when it's aged like this. So the key, once you have it roughed in, you must make stop cuts that are nice and deep. And I'm using a profile of a gouge that follows the eye socket all the way around. And I can also use it for the top of the eye. And when pieces break out, and they will like that, glue them carefully back into position. OK, so I'll tap that in using the sweep of the chisel. Now this whole area gets evacuated. OK, but then the eye is the key to all of this. I want to open up the pupil. And again, I'm using another gouge with a different profile to open that right up, cutting instead of prying. And there's that piece of wood that I'm going to save and glue back on, because I want that to be the top of the iris. This is the eye or brow, top of the eye right here and here. So the eyes make it. So I'll open that up and continue to profile the rest of this and sweep this with a V tool where once we put a stain on this, we have long running whiskers that run the length of his Fu Manchu right here. Just hit a knot, so I'll work around that. And found wood like this can be challenging. And if you do lose wood, all you have to do is either glue it back on or modify your design. So these are a lot of fun to work with. And the look is just fabulous because it's natural. Now I'll keep working on that. That will have about three more hours of carving. But look right here. This is the wind spirit, the horse. It's flying, the flying horse. And I have this gnarly piece of reclaimed walnut with two horse patterns. Over to the bandsaw. Now before you think I'm crazy for using this board, look at how badly cupped it is. And it has a lot of defects, a lot of checks. And so this horse pattern that's 32 inches long, 13 inches tall, maximum height, that works perfectly on this. Maximum yield. I'll turn on the dust collector, sculpt away this way, separate these two patterns, and then use a bandsaw to cut, leaving the line so I can sand down to it. And then on the super tight turns, once the main pattern's cut out, I take that to the scroll saw, and I use a number seven blade with 10 and a half teeth per inch, and I sculpt in those details. And once I have that cut out, it's over to the workbench to add the details. Straight from the scroll saw, it's over to the detailing. Now if you look at this one, I profiled this outside using all the things that you saw me use on the face. Okay, so I profiled it to bring the muscles out. Then I'm using this chisel that vibrates as it cuts to bring in the accent. And then once that's done, you can see that I have a hole drilled here to go on top of the weather vane. And you want it through the front leg because that will make it directional. And that looks fantastic. A little bit of finish, good outdoor oil on this, a little bit of stain for character on this one, and we're off to the races. Susie, the last time we did this, right? you remember you bought this and, and Scott said that you were going to do this right. when you retire? Right. Did you get a retire? No. Amazingly enough, What's I haven't. What's the matter that guy? I know. I haven't figured out a way to do it. <laughs> so you're still stuck with me. All now, I need some help painting this, Jim. We'll I've, get her done. I've carved it. I think I did a pretty good job. What do you think? Yes, very nice. Thank you. We're going to start on the back piece. Okay. And we're going to let Susie do some of this one. But I'll, I'll come in here and 
uh, I guess we should have got some water in here and got this more ready, but we didn't. And this is a Payne's Gray, they this call it. This is a Payne's Gray. Which really gives it the smoky, snowy effect. It's a great background color you use a lot, don't you, Jim? Yes, I use it on almost all my paintings. It's a, it's a cover that I put on and then I'll put brown, burn umber over the top of it. And it just gives it the coolest effect. It's a great background color. Because I did that, I remember, on the house last year that I carved. Yes. We used a lot of that and kind of wipe it off. And I see we, we wipe this down as much as we can. We put it on fast and we get rid of that color that's sticking out there because all we want is it down into the, into the, the grooves of the wood. Mm -hmm. So you really make it, make it look like bark coming out of there. That is cool. Now, before we did this, we put on some linseed oil that you put on and soak in. That way it doesn't absorb all your paint and right. you can really see the paint, right? Does right. that need to dry a certain length of time? No, it doesn't. Okay. You, can, you can go ahead and uh, paint right over the top of it okay. if you want to. Okay, Jim, I've just about got the trees done. How's the moose coming along? It's coming. Okay, we got burn umber on here and we're starting to paint his eye. We got his nose here. Cool. We, we got shadowed under his mouth. And now we're going to take and put some shadow underneath his front legs here. We're going to shadow that a little bit. He's really coming alive. That's amazing. And you rub it out so it doesn't look real strong. Just Back gives leg. It, just gives it a little bit of definition. Yeah. Yep. Fun. And you know he's... You know, this is the undercarriage of his belly, mm -hmm. so you want to wipe this down a little bit and get some shadows in there. Neat. Well, I'm using a heat gun before we put the final coat of the snow on. Jim, how are the trees going? Yes, and I'm putting brown, burnt umber, on the trees. And we are using acrylic, we forgot to tell you that. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> That should have been first. That should have. <laughs> we got so excited about the painting. Yeah. Okay, what we're doing here is we know the snow is coming in from the right side, and it's a snowstorm, so we're, we're putting paint on the right side of these trees. And then after we get it heavy enough on, this, on the right side of the tree, then we'll go to the left side and just oh. shadow the tree with white snow. Same way with the ground. Now see what we're doing on the other side, we're just, yeah. we're just hitting this real fast and getting a little bit of snow on there. And that just makes that tree just come alive. Okay guys, let it snow. Now the moose accent, Jim, with the gnarly brush, let's see how that comes together. Okay, now we know the top of the moose is gonna have more snow than underneath. Right. So we use a gnarly brush and we put snowflakes on the top of the moose. Cool. And on his sides. <laughs> and uh, we'll do that on all the trees also. Wow. Fun. That is truly spectacular. Now, Jim Foster teaches carving classes mm -hmm. in Piqua, Ohio, and the art of scroll sawing and wood carving. It's a book, 10 great projects, just like this one. Although this is my favorite, Jim. It is. it is. It is. <laughs> Put her there, brother. All right. God bless Thank you, guys. You. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay. It's been fun again. It is. I hope great. you get to retire. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Me now. too. Let's put them all together and see how it looks. There it is. All right. That's awesome. Scott gets time to put a frame around that. And that's in next week's show. Okay. But right now we have to go look at the weather vane. So that's a wrap on 3D all right. carving. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Oh, it turned out so cool. There you go, Susie. Now you'll know which way the wind blows. That I will. It looks beautiful. <laughs> now this show was all about possibilities with wood. Firewood into weather vanes. And I'll guarantee you one thing, that 3D carving, spectacular. Thank you. I love it.
And next week, speaking of 3D carving, we're going to frame this out and make all sorts of cool frames. So stay tuned. And 3D frames as well. So thanks for being with us. See you next week. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Craig, from the first cut to the final assembly, providing woodworkers with products that help simplify woodworking challenges. Craig. Gorilla Glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. For dry hands that crack and split. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Easy Wood Tools, American-made tools for all skill levels. For more information behind the scenes at the American Woodshop, go to our website for complete details on tips and like us on Facebook. Were you ever in Aberdeen? Bonnie, laddie, laddie, prettiest girl you'll ever